Hi there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with a video all about mutation testing in Java. Probably the easiest way for me to explain what mutation testing is, is to demonstrate it. So I've got a simple program here that represents a Mars rover that we can drive over the surface of Mars, an idealized grid of XY coordinates that represent the surface. And we send our rover a sequence of instructions to this public Go method here. Uh, and each individual character in that string represents one instruction. So R to turn the rover to the right, L to turn it to the left, F to make it go forward one square, and B to make it go back one square. So a very simple program. And if we take a look at this code, well, hmm, lots of nested if statements, lots of duplication. It's a long method. I'd really like to refactor this. But before I can refactor this safely, I need to answer a question, which is, if I were to break this code, how soon would I know? How safe is it to refactor this? What I need is a suite of fast running tests. And I just so happen to have 17 fast running unit tests for my Mars rover. So maybe the first thing I should do to assure myself that it's safe to refactor would be to run these tests. So let's run these tests. And they're all green, 17 passing tests there. And you might think, well, the tests are passing, so it's safe to continue now. But hey, hang on. Just because all the tests are passing, that doesn't mean all the code's being tested. Maybe, and a lot of teams measure this, maybe we should just check to see how much of this rover code is actually being executed by the test. So I'm going to run my tests now and get a coverage report. I'm using the built-in tool in IntelliJ to do this. Aha, okay. Tests are all passing and we're executing 100% of the rover code when we run the tests. So, passing tests, 100% coverage, feeling safe now? Well, I don't know. Um, just because code's being executed by a test, that doesn't mean it's really being tested. It might be possible for that code to be wrong, but we don't have a test that would pick up on that. So how could we check whether line each line of code is really being tested well one thing we could do would be to deliberately break a line of code let's say for example this line here instruction equals r let's turn that into not equals r so let's negate it and let's rerun our tests see what happens look at that lots of tests failing hmm so what we've done there is we've created a mutant version of our code. We've mutated the code. We run our test to see whether or not our test suite kills the mutant. If any tests fail, we say the tests have killed the mutant. If the mutant survives, if no tests fail, then maybe we need to go back to our tests and look to see if there are any gaps that we need to fill to make refactoring safer. So let's undo that and let's do another one for the next line of code. So this line here, facing equals north. Well, that's a Boolean expression. Another Boolean expression we could replace that with, very simply, would be just true. Let's see again what happens when we run our tests against this mutated version of the code. Again, tests are failing. Our test suite has killed the mutant. OK, now, let's just rerun our tests to make sure they're all passing. So line by line, we mutate that line of code. We create a mutant version of the code that includes one defect. We run our tests and we see whether or not our test suite kills the mutant. Do any tests fail? And that builds up a picture of the mutation coverage of our test suite. In other words, how much of the code is really being tested? How much of the code can be mutated and the tests will catch that they'll kill the mutant? which is a more meaningful measure of coverage. It's not just which lines of code were executed, it's which lines of code are really being tested. In other words, tests will fail if we were to break that line of code. Now, to do all of the code in the Mars rover, that would be quite laborious and would be quite a boring video for you to watch. So you'd be delighted to hear that there are tools that can do this automatically for us. And a very popular mutation testing tool for Java and the JVM is called PIT. So let's take a look at their homepage here. So pittest.org or pytest.org, depending on how you pronounce it. And if we take a look at the quick start, it's quite easy to get started with this. Now, we've got a bunch of options for this about how we can run our coverage reports. Um, 
we could use the command line we could use add but i have a maven project so i'm going to use maven to bring this in as a plugin so we can copy and paste this code into our pom file so our next plugin there let's give it a version number it'll recognize 1.2.0 and automatically brought in so if we take a look now at my maven explorer here we will see there is a goal that allows us to run a mutation coverage report there it is so before you run this make sure that all your tests are passing i could be wrong but i think what the tool does is we'll look at the most recent test results and if there are any failing tests well it'll tell you to fix those first before it, it does anything else in this case all our tests are green so we should be able to run this maven build for this particular goal mutation coverage and get a coverage report let's see off it goes fingers crossed uh -huh. it's having a little think uh, okay now pit is springing into life so it's going to crunch through our code perform a bunch of mutations of different kinds there we go took about eight seconds um and then it's going to spit out if we look in if we look at our build outputs here we get pit reports and they're sort of date time stamped in terms of the folders there and that's html so we can dig down into this let's bring that up in chrome there we go okay so here is our pit test coverage report 100% of the code is covered in terms of line coverage. We knew that already. But the mutation coverage is not 100%. It's only 97%. There was one line of code that it performed a mutation on and all the tests still passed. So let's drill down into that and see what line of code that was. So inside our Rover, our Rover class there. So we can see all of these um, lines of code that are highlighted in green here. What they're saying is, we perform mutations on these and our test suite killed the mutant. So we don't need to worry too much about these. The red one here, this is the mutant that survived. Let's take a look and see what it did. Okay, it replaced the subtraction with addition. So it turned the minus one into a plus one, which is kind of what I would have done as well. And for some reason, all our tests still passed. Our test suite did not kill that mutant. So what we do is we take a look. Let's take a look in our rover tests. So this is, this particular line of code is the code that moves our rover backwards when it's facing north. Do we have a test for that? Move back facing north. There we go. Aha! And here is the culprit. Uh, some naughty person, I can't imagine who, some naughty developer has commented out the test assertion so that that test always passes. Now, of course, you would never do this, and you, you don't know anybody who would ever do this, comment out a test or an assertion just because the test is failing. They would always fix the test. Um, but you can imagine easily having gaps in your test for all kinds of reasons, whether it's tests that have been commented out like this, uh, test assertions that have been commented out, or whether it's tests that aren't really asserting anything, or whether it's missing tests, or whatever it is. So there is a gap here. Let's plug that gap let's see what happens if we bring this back let's rerun our mutation coverage report and see what that does to our mutation coverage now obviously with large code bases this is going to take a while so this is not something that you would run every five minutes this is something that you would run probably periodically maybe for example in, as a build step or on a separate machine as part of that build process or maybe you would run it as an overnight job or however you do it um, let's take a look now that's our our new report and oh no okay maybe not maybe that's not the one let's take a look and see which one we should be looking at i'm getting a little um no this is the new one hmm that is interesting do i need to refresh that no okay bear with what's going on here i don't know okay let's take a look we definitely included that let's rerun the tests and make sure they're all passing mm-hmm 
Mm -hmm. Let's run mutation coverage again. Okay, and we get a new one. Let's take a look in there and let's see. There we go. Okay, so it was a, it was a Maven issue there. We had a few of those this morning. So with a fresh copy of the code, a fresh build, we find that now by reintroducing that assertion, we essentially have 100% coverage in terms of mutation coverage. In other words, every line of code is really being tested. So it's now safe. I feel confident now to go in and do some refactoring. Um, so that's mutation testing, deliberately introducing errors into the code, running the test to see whether or not any of the tests fail, so we can build a picture comprehensively of how much of our code is really being tested and therefore how much confidence we can place in our test suite. I hope that's been of some use to you. Watch out for the Maven gotchas, um, depending on what tools you're using. But uh, on the whole, I find this tool pretty straightforward to use. Um, other mutation testing tools for the JVM are available. Um, so if you want to explore those, by all means, but I found PIT to be one of the most mature. Um, so that's mutation testing. It is a powerful and useful technique. And I hope you can find a way to incorporate that into your development processes.